All right, what do we got? So long, friend. Oh, this is gonna be a sad one, right? Okay. Even when he is trying to look detached, his true feelings show through. He is timid, cowardly, and gentle. He might try his best to put on a threatening expression, but the smile that comes afterwards is indescribably sweet and almost worshipful. This is why Kaim is always telling him to forget it. This happens when they are perched on bar stools or earning a day's pay in the quarry or walking through the marketplace or standing on the stone paved roadway. But why, big brother? Tobal, sa Tobal says with a pout. He always calls Kaim big brother and though Kaim has never asked for his companionship, he takes every opportunity to follow him around. He is worshipful in this sense. Please take me with you, big brother Kaim when you leave this town. He begs like a child even though he is old enough to have a regular job. Sailing over the ocean, crossing continents, traveling anywhere you like, my heart starts pounding when I imagine that kind of freedom, he says, his eyes shining like a child's. I've always wanted to meet a traveler like you, big brother. Take me with you, please. I can't stand this hick of town anymore. He would grab Kaim's hand and cling to it like a little boy, and often he would look around at the people on the street or at the crowds in the tavern, openly making boyish faces at them to show Kaim his disgust. You come from another town, so you know what I'm talking about. The only thing this place has in its history... Sure, it's old, but it's half dead. Look at these people's faces. Not one of them has any spark. All they want is to get through one ordinary day after another without any problems. It's the worst place in the world. If I have to stay cooped up here much longer, I'm going to have to have musk growing on me. No spark. Kaim doesn't see it that way. People behave with the refinement and mild manner appropriate to a historic city known as the ancient capital. They simply have no taste for the kind of ambition that go with high hopes or danger. Having never set foot outside this place where he was born and raised, Tobal knows nothing about other towns. Kaim knows all too much about them. There are those that, that used to be left and right what there are those that used to be left and right banks of a single town separated only by a river, but which now class in hatred in intense and ongoing war. Towns in the grip of famine, where the residents snatch food from food from one another. Economically, flourishing towns rampant with crime driven by greed, towns, towns of rotting houses abandoned by the people in search of wealth and prosperity, while just over the hill, there sparkle, bloom, there sparkle boom towns where the people celebrate their riches all night long. On his endless journey, Kaim has seen towns without number, and he, <clears throat> and he not only thinks to himself, but says to Tobel, this is a good town. But praise, it, praise is the last thing Tobel wants to hear about his hometown. You must be joking, he says. Not at all, says Kaim. This really is a good town. I'm telling you, that can't be true. No place is perfect, of course. I'm not talking about perfection. You've only been here six months or so. You don't know. I've been stuck in this hick town since the day I was born. You can't know how I, how I feel. I'm bored out of my mind, I'm sick of the place, I can't stand it anymore. Kaim is not unaware of what Topol is trying to tell him. Still, but no. Kaim shakes his head and gives Topol a sour smile. You know, he says, there are some people in, in this world who would give anything to get a taste of what it's like to have enough peaceful days to make you bored. Well, that may be so. I think you were lucky to have been born in a town like this, where people are so happy. When you sleep in, when you sleep in an inn in this town, what a sentence. When you sleep in an inn in this town, you don't have to keep your ear cocked all night for threatening sounds in the hallway. Young women can walk the streets at night now without a dagger for protection. The children have plenty of, of plain but nourishing food and they can play outdoors until the sun goes down. Life on the road teaches you these things. The more towns you see, the more deeply the lesson leaves its mark on you. The kinds of, the kinds of things that Topol takes for granted are in fact the indispensable keys to happiness. I'm not so sure, big brother. 
Isn't happiness making your dreams come true? If all you need to do is go on living in peace and security, what's the point of living at all? Tobol is not just being per uh, perverse and arguing for the sake of arguing. Eyes locked on Kimes, he is asking these questions, questions in all seriousness and sincerity. Kime recognizes that Tobol is an absolutely straightforward fellow, and that precisely because he had a comfortable, untroubled upbringing, he has come to feel constrained in the town where he was born. The irony of it all calls forth a twinge of pain in Kime's breast. This in turn provokes him to challenge Tobol. So tell me, what is your dream? My dream? That's obvious, isn't it? To get the hell out of this place as soon as possible. And go where? Anywhere. Anywhere but here. And what will you do when you get there? I don't know. What if you end up someplace that's not all you were expecting? I said I don't know, didn't I? Stop being so hard on me, big brother. I'm not being hard on you. These are the things you have to think about. Well, I've had enough. An outsider like you can't possibly know how I feel. Though he stalks away in anger, Topol will be back in the morning as worshipful as ever of his big brother. He has the simple carefree personality of a child. Topol has a wife, the young, still girlish Angela, who he has known since childhood. Angela carries within her the crystallization of their love Tobel will soon become a father. Tobel's parents, relatives and friends shower their blessings upon the young couple who will soon be young parents. But Tobel says to Kaim, I don't want this. Glowering, flowering, he, had, he all but spits the words, uh, words out as the two sit at the far end of the tavern's bar. Don't want to be a father, Kaim asks, which only increases the bitterness of Tobel's expression. Tobel nods, but as if to negate his answer, he mutters, No, I'm glad enough to have a kid. How could I not be happy about that? But I don't know. I just don't want this. He can't quite put it into words, he says. He cocks his head a few times as if to explain himself, and then he breaks down his liquor. You don't have a family, do you, big brother? No, I don't. What does it feel like to be all alone in the world? Kaim's only answer is a strange smile. Tobel interprets Kaim's expression and silence to suit himself. You're absolutely free, right? Of course you are. No load to bear, no leg irons. You think kids are leg irons? In a word, yes. To tell the truth, Angela is too. And my parents, when they get old, they'll be another burden. Working every day for Angela and the kid, raising the kid, taking care of my old parents. And my life ends. That's what the birth of a child is. It's like a life sentence, you're stuck. Kaim does not nod in agreement with this, neither does he try to argue against it. Topol interprets the silence too as he sees fit. I know what you're thinking, he frowns. Shut up, kid, you don't know what you're talking about. Kaim says nothing. Topol, uncomfortable, looks away. I'm glad, he says, more to himself than to Kaim. I'm glad to be having a kid with Angela. I'm going to do everything I can for them, it's true. I wouldn't lie to you. You have to believe me, big brother. I really am happy, and I know I'm going to have to work hard. Yes, I know, says Kain. I'm happy, but at the same time, I don't want it. It's not that I'm embarrassed about it or anything. It's just that... I don't know. I want to give up this whole business and run away somewhere far away. So now the truth comes out, Kaim says with a laugh. What do you mean? You just said you want to run away, not travel. This is probably Tobel's true feeling, to which he gives a grudging assent. I suppose so, how else can I put it? Kaim almost wishes he had been a little tougher on Tobel. How would Tobel answer if he said, for example, you know Tobel, we started talking about traveling with me around the time Angela's belly is starting to swell. What would the look on Tobel's face be like if he asked, if a family is, a, is leg irons, why did you even propose to Angela? How would Tobel shift his gaze if he confronted him with, you know Tobel, 
If you want to get out of this town so badly, you don't have to travel with me. Just take off by yourself. But Kaim doesn't have the meanness to ask such question, nor is it given, given to meddling in people's private affairs. Instead, he drains his cup of its last few drops and says only, let's get out of here. Even after they had left the tavern, Tobol goes on about the stupidity of living the rest of his life in this town. The broad night sky is clear, the moon is out and perfectly round. I'm asking you again, big brother. When you leave this town, just say the word to me. Wouldn't it be better for you too to have a traveling companion? Tobol is starting to go in circles again when Kaim interrupts him. Did you want to get out of here all by yourself? Traveling with a companion is not exactly a solo trip. No, well, you see, uh, you're right. I just go part, part way with you. You can let me tag along a little while and then I'll take off on my own. You just slow me down. I know that, I know that. Traveling is hard, sure, and my life might even be in danger sometimes. But I know, I know that. But that's what makes it so thrilling. Risking your life is no game. Look, if I turn out to be a drag on you, you can just leave me behind, that's it. I wouldn't mind that. I mean, look, I'm ready to leave my parents and my wife and kid behind. This is never going to end. Kaim nuts and with a sigh says, all right. You'll take me with you. Tobel's face lights up. I've been in this town too long, says Kaim. It's about time for me to get out there walking with the wind in my face. Yeah, that's it. Walk with the wind in your face. Life on the road. When do we leave? I'm, it's getting pretty late in the year. You don't want to be on the road in the winter, do you? So how about after the snow in the past has melted? Kind points to the moon hanging in the night sky. Huh? Tobel seems puzzled as he looks up. The night this moon is perfectly round again after it's wanted and waxed. Meaning... Exactly one month from tonight. Tobel's face starts to move as if he wants to say something. He probably wants to say, that's too soon. His face betrays a look of hesitation and confusion that was absent when he was engaged in his usual endless chatter. A month from now. That's the middle of winter, big brother. I know that. Won't it be hard getting through the pass? You don't want to go? No, that's not it. If you don't like it, you don't have to come with me. Leaving the night of the next week, next full moon, that's all there is to it. Okay then, big brother, I'll go. I'm definitely in. The night of the next full moon. Angela would be having her baby right about then. The month slips by. Toward the beginning, Tobel is excited, and whenever they meet, he reminds Kaim, Don't forget your promise, big brother. After the waning moon has disappeared from the sky, however, he begins, begins to grow more reserved. The vanished moon, re moon reappears in the sky, and as it waxes little by little, Tobel stops trailing after Kaim. Sometimes he goes so far as to slip away through the crowd when he sees Kaim approaching in the marketplace. Kaim notices Tobel's change in attitude. It is something he expected to happen and was even counting on. Hands upon her swollen belly, Angela wears a smile of deep serenity as she shops in the market. Not just Tobel, but everyone who encounters that smile of hers must surely come to realize this. The dreams of the young, to be sure, involve doing what you want to do. But that is not the only kind of dream there is. When people grow up, they see that there is another kind of dream, and that is to wish for the smile of, it, of the one you love and who loves you in return. To long for it always and forever. To long for it always and forever. That is another kind of dream that people come to understand when they grow up. The moon is full again. In its perfect roundness, the moon floods the empty stone paved road with brilliant light. Tobel comes running, 
out of breath, to the empty room where Kaim has completed his preparation for travel. Tobol is carrying nothing. He has not even changed out of his everyday clothing. Big brother, I'm sorry, he pants, gasping for breath. He ducks his head repeatedly before Kaim in an apology. You changed your mind, Kaim asked, trying not to smile. No, not at all. I'm going to go. I'm planning to go with you, big brother. Only? Angela went into labor as the sun was going down, he says. They called the town's most skilled and experienced midwife, but Tobol still hasn't heard the baby cry. The birth has taken much longer than it should. Angela is giving it everything she got. My mother and father are praying for all they are worth, so at least until the baby is safely born, I want to stay with Angela. She said it, she says it calms her down to hold my hand, so well, I really can't leave her now. Kaim nods to him with full understanding. So please, big brother, wait just a little longer. As soon as I've seen the baby born, I'll leave home, I swear. I'll definitely go, so just a little longer. Even as he speaks, his feet are stamping impatiently on the ground with his eagerness to rush back home. I understand, says Kaim. I'll wait until the moon is directly overhead in the night sky. Don't worry, it won't take that long. You will just have to wait a little while, just a very short while. No hurry, but on the other hand, I want you to promise me one thing. What's that? When the baby is born, I want you to hold it in your arms. Don't come back here until you've held the baby, understood? Tobal looks at him with a puzzled expression, but he nods in agreement and says, understood. I will do exactly that, big brother. So be sure to wait for me. Tobal charges out of the room with even greater force than when he came in. The sound of his footsteps running on the stone pavement drops away, and when Kaim is sure he is gone, a smile slowly spreads across his face. Oh, neat. Tobal never comes back. As the moon reaches its zenith, zenith and begins to dip towards the west, west, signs of light appear in the eastern sky. Kaim approaches the mountain pass on the edge of town. He will be traveling alone. Heading up to the pass, he walks swiftly as if to shake the sound of Tobel's voice remaining in his ears. Big brother Kaim, I'm, so, I'm sorry, big brother, I'm sorry. He can imagine the voice all too clearly and Tobel bowing his head in abject apology. There's no need for him to hear the actual voice. Long after he left the town, he will continue to see Tobel's worshipful, worshipful smile in the eye of his mind. Tobel would not have provided so much support as a traveling companion, but a journey together would likely have given them both much to laugh about. But never mind, this is just fine. Kaim tells himself and ups his pace even more. He is not the least bit resentful or angry at Tobel for having broken his promise. Quite the contrary. He would like to bless Tobel for having chosen to stay in his native place and protect his home. All the more so because it, this is a dream that can never come true for Kaim himself. A frigid wind tears through the pre-dawn pass. If the cries of a newborn baby could ride on that wind to be heard up here, Kaim chuckles at the thought. Will Tobel abandon his dream and leave his hometown, or will he start looking for another big brother who will help conceal his fear of going on the road alone? Kaim has no way to tell, best to leave it unresolved. Tobel could not take to the road the night that his child was born. The hands with which he held his newborn baby were useless for travel preparations. If only for that reason, he took one step towards becoming a grown-up. Let's go. Kaim mutters to himself as he crosses over the pass. Look, Angela, he's smiling. The happy smile that Tobel fixes on his baby will be travel companion enough for Kaim until he reaches the next town. Surprisingly! Not ridiculous and sad. Okay, a happy story. That was unexpected. 